the oldest of the quartet at 46 years of age. Nothing left to prove to anyone. World champion in 2014 when he beat a very young Alban Ocean in the final. And caught a little flick on the red three, so much more difficult two ball than maybe expected. And you kind of wonder where he's going with the cue ball here. If you're real comfortable, you can kind of kill it. You could use the seven to slow the cue ball down. Now he's queuing a little low, so maybe a bit of a drag shot. Yeah, kind of a difficult shot to take on early. Special, it's a shot you kind of stay away from for the most part. A little fortunate to get a partial snooker here, it appears. Now, Loho Sam, who kind of put his name in the papers with that Whirlpool Masters last year. Then had some nice results after that in a few of the bigger events. 256 player events. Nice jump shot to open. Extended now many would consider maybe Robbie Capito the stronger between the two pair. The two from Hong Kong, China, excuse me. Yeah, Capito turned 22 last week. Right, number 56 in the world and someone we've been talking about for a couple of years and I think most people would have expected him to have come on a bit further than he has and really go deep in a big matchroom event. But at that age, still huge amounts of time to do those things. Yeah, one of the tougher jump shots. Got to jump two balls, and they're quite a bit spaced apart. So he's probably landing on the three ball here. Looking for a little fortune. Nice hit on the red three. Going to come near the cue ball, making this shot much more playable. Now, Niels, who has played with a few different partners in this event, is still looking for a big title. You know, he, Ralph Suquet had a nice interview earlier this year saying how he feels like there's still one more in there. I think Niels feels like there's several more in there for him. I think the way Niels looks at life, he probably sees himself as a newcomer just getting started. Well, I think kind of the new generation of players can kind of rekindle you and, you know, look to improve, even though you've done things a certain way for a long time. I think as the game evolves, we'll realize there's just better ways to do them. And I think the more we see the younger players, they, they give us more ideas about that. Never really went away, but... He has had quite a revival over the last year or so. And that's reflected in a current world ranking of 14. Yeah, and for him, it's been a year and a half or so of, you know, kind of what he was his entire career, a very consistent player. And then once he got down towards the end, usually played his best pool. All right, a little funny here, so... You're probably not going to take on too much on the seven. Pretty flat and don't want to make a big mistake. This is where he'll listen to Niels on what Niels prefers, whether that be a bank on the black eight or draw back for some type of cut shot. I like this, drawing back for the cut. The reason being is, of course, this is going to be a difficult shot, but these are types you're going to have to make to win this World Cup. like a little kick there it seems like on the eight and just didn't catch it where he wanted or how he wanted you 
you know, we saw that in the final, and of course, I think Phil was still in the booth when we talked about this, but what we saw or we agreed on is, is how Dang and Beasterbosch really made each other play better. And, you know, it's like some golf matches where the two players kind of tear away and they, they just really throw blow after blow. And the thing about not only playing doubles, but in these shorter races, you can't look for that, right? It's got to be real tidy from the beginning and just a real consistent play. You can't look for some type of gear. So one or two mistakes and missed opportunities on both sides. But Niels Fine deposits the winning nine ball. One nil to the Dutch. So this is the format. 15 countries qualified from the World Nine Ball Tour rankings. One of those is Spain, who is hosts of two teams. We'll see Spain B a little later. Scotch doubles is the format, basically alternate shots, win or break. So every mistake really is magnified by that, and also by the fact that the first couple of rounds are raced to seven. Then we move up to nine for the next couple of rounds, and the final on Sunday will be raced to 11. Standard shot clock rules, 30 seconds, one extension for each team in each rack. Yeah, that final on Sunday in the Spanish Open here in this wonderful city of Lugo, it was like the two players were feeding each other rocket fuel. The standard the they were getting rack. to by the end. Yeah, one of the greatest break. finals we've Take ever seen. It now. ended in disappointment for Mark Beisterbosch. But he's back on the table today, and his team have won the opener. Of course, Niels, who breaks the balls really well, but a little surprised he didn't let Beisterbosch maybe take it on first. A couple reasons why, of course, Mark's known for that big break, but also that first the shot south after south. the break, right, where Niels is so savvy. Of course, we can't take anything away from Mark. Only one player in the building that was happier than him. And he's not even in the World Cup of Pool. Dang. Our first push-out situation. If you're new to nine ball after the break, no matter if you're the incoming team or the breaking team, you're allowed to push the cue ball out anywhere on the table. You have to declare it, of course. And then the incoming team has the option to take the shot or pass it back. Really a big strategy part of the game. And it's amazing when times get really crucial how important the push-out is. Seems like we have so many push-outs and hill-hill matches. And Mark Beisterbosch, 29 years of age. He's fallen down the world rankings quite a bit so far this year because he hadn't actually accumulated any points in 2023 prior to the Spanish Open. But now that he's done there, he's pretty much done well there. Pretty much back to where he started the year. Now 17th in the world. Yeah. Back to the top house. players, I think the number has grown to where I feel like it's like 35 or 40 that can win these big events. Mark definitely in that mix. Funny shot here, and I don't mind the pass because anytime the object ball, that being the blue two, is near the cushion, it's a little touchy, right? There's extension, you, extension code. You can't, you can't do a whole lot because of double kisses and whatnot, so control becomes very difficult. I wonder if he tries to edge this and maybe bring the cue ball back where it's at now. Maybe play the cue ball behind the green six. Would you please put it on Salam? Thank you. We had some great matches on day one. I think it's slated to have even better matches on day two. Yeah, I think the Austria versus Australia match last night was about as good a first round match as we've ever seen in the World Cup. A really nice play there. He made it look easy. And I understood that Hong Kong was a little worried about the blue two and where it was going. They recognized putting the cue ball behind the black eight, but controlling the object ball that well, that's a good sign for the Dutch team. Now this is a 
Got to add some side spin to that little window between the pink four and the nine now. Do you kick at it softly? In a perfect world, you'd like to say yes, but I think I like going with some speed. That's why Gosh, I think it was harder to judge the ahead. soft spin at the lighter speed, especially on a table you're not so place. familiar with. Now again, the semifinals is a race to nine, and the final being a race to 11, even with those numbers. And these great players, no lead is safe, but certainly not safe here in these races to seven. I think seven is basically the perfect number for the early rounds. It's long enough to be a viable contest and short enough that any team goes in with a realistic chance against any other team. Yeah, and from what we've seen that when it comes down to it, when you talk about the winning moments, which are so crucial and we saw that last night with Australia. It was unfortunate. They played such a good match, just couldn't get that last one down. But I think the race of seven still shows us the best team for the most part. Really nice hit. It's going to serve up a shot in the corner maybe. Yeah, it's just perfect window between the purple five and the red three. And it dresses up position nicely. So no stress here for Beister Bosch. And I'll tell you, I was thinking about that final this morning, uh, Michael, and, you know, my all-time golf final that I liked. Uh, and there's a bunch of them, of course. But when we talk about two players going head-to-head, -head, I think it was Bob May and Tiger Woods oh. at Valhalla. I think that's one of the greatest I've ever seen. Yeah, PGA Championship 2000. Yeah. Tiger's big summer. Yeah. So you're yeah. comparing it to that? Well, that, that final was just, I felt like that, you know, of course... Bob May and Tiger made birdie after birdie, putt after putt, but I just felt like that match kind of gave me that same feeling in both Dang and Beisterbosch got better as each rack went. Yeah, it's a good analogy. You think also of some of the great Wimbledon finals like Nadal and Federer in 2008 and the famous McEnroe-Borg tiebreak. Great comparisons to make. But back on this Wednesday afternoon, Niels Fyen has opened the door here with that miss on the three. Yeah, very easy miss as well, so maybe a little jittery. Yeah, I, I personally can't can't wait for both Dang and Beister Bosch to face each other again. Right. Now, Loho Sum hasn't had the results that we saw him have last year in some of these events. Yeah, last 64 at the World Championship and same at the UK Open. It's but funny. Um, I'm sorry, Michael. I was, was going to say, though, that I've watched him at, you know, here at the Spanish Open here last week, and I feel like his technique has gotten better. He's really been working on it, I think, a little less of the shoulder involved in the swing and I think you know anytime a great player is going through a little change and I personally do see some change and I think it's a conscious effort you know sometimes you know when the heat's on you can kind of like uh, have some in-between things happen so we'll look for him to get some more of those results like he had last year Yeah, Loho Sum is now 25 years of age. He's a few places below Capito in the world rankings at 64th. He mentioned his run to the World Masters final last year, but he also was one win away from the 16-player single elimination at the UK Open. Last 32 of the Worlds. Last 64 of the European and US Opens. And had been looking to build on that this year and hasn't quite happened for him yet. So the miss on the three from Niels Bryan. He's ended up being decisive. Robbie Capito delivers the nine ball, which makes it one each. Now let's hear from this Hong Kong team. Every year, is, you know, this is like a dream event for us, for every player to, to snap off. So 
if we manage to get our first few wins and uh, we're feeling pretty confident. You know, they're awesome players. Everyone's amazing players over here, so there's not an easy match. You know, we just got to do what's in front of us. Yeah, especially just won the runner-up in Spanish Open, so this confidence might be very good. But who knows? Of course we want to win, for sure. But uh, we're, not thinking about, we're not thinking about it too much. We're just trying to do our best as much as possible. You know, play each shot in a short race. Anything could happen, you know. Just one mistake could lead to the whole match. So we're just trying to do our best and uh, take our chances. Exactly, just do our best. Do you reckon you could still slide down the stair rail like that, JJ? Uh, no, that, my body was never built for that. I'm always worried any time I watch anyone do it, to be, to be fair. So, back on level terms. Loho, some to break. Really nice connection there on the rack, and the t blue twos kind of give them a very easy opener. A little bit of traffic to work the rock back down for the red three, but you got to believe Robbie's going to figure out a path. Robbie Capito made a promising start in the Spanish Open in this venue last week. Got through to winners qualifying and gave Alexa Pechelge of Serbia a close one before going down 9-7. I put him into losers qualifying, and there he was beaten 9-3 by John Mora. Man, he's got to avoid the purple here. That's the big ball that could cause some problems. Looks like he's going to just get by it. Well, just a little flick, so the black eight not intruding. Loho Sum had a similar Spanish Open to his teammate. Also got to winners qualifying. Lost and then lost in losers qualifying as well. But my word, he had no luck of the draw. Played Fedor Gorst and pushed him to 9-7 in winners qualifying. Then faced Skylar Woodward, who went on to the semi-finals and went down to him 9-4. So neither of them featured in the 64-player single elimination phase. Yeah, nice opener from Robbie with the cue ball and. Very calm stroke there from Loho Sum, so this could be a big missed three ball from Niels. This could cost him some games. Looks like he can kind of just kill the cue ball. Fine, must be so frustrated sitting there because I spoke to him this morning at breakfast and he was saying since he went out of the Spanish Open, it's just been a waiting game for him and obviously he was... Mark Beisterbosch's lead supporter in that run over the weekend. Fine, had gone out in the last 64 to Eklund Kachi. And even since that tournament ended, they've had a couple of days, and he's just been desperate to get back on the table. And denied himself a chance to get stuck in early on with that miss three. Y'all got that. And just a little yeah, communication here on where they want the cue ball. Probably would rather stay away from the draw stroke, like a straight draw on the eight. Most of the players would like some kind of rolling ball with a natural angle to get a little closer to the nine. Well, it looks like he's going to play a little more of the stun. Now, Robbie really has all the shots. I'll tell you one thing Robbie's done. He's won, He's probably lost more close matches in the last year than any player. Seems like he's always in it. Well, the unseeded teams really put it up to the more established World Cup powers yesterday. And so far, Kong, it's a similar theme here on day two. A break and run for Hong Kong. They lead 2-1.
What a discovery this place has been for us all over the last week and a half. Lugo in northwestern Spain, absolutely wonderful city. We had the Roman festival going on here last week, which really added to the buzz of the Spanish Open. And here we are now in the early stages of the World Cup in the very same venue. Hong Kong after that break and run in rack three are ahead for the first time. Robbie Capito's previous break in this match came up dry. Let's see if he can fare better this time in rack four. I'll tell you, we saw Albania really break the balls well yesterday and then, of course, backed it up after the break with probably the best performance as a whole. But these last two breaks from Hong Kong and China have been on point. Well, if you can judge by the layout, which doesn't tell you everything about a break, then that was absolutely textbook. Yeah, when the timing's good, the balls just race out of the rack, get nice openings, and what happens is, no matter which ball is the lowest value, you can see here he's got a shot on every ball on the table. It wouldn't matter which one it was. Here's a question for you, Jeremy. Lee Chen Man and Kong Man Ho. Do you know who they were? You're looking at me very blankly. I do not. They were the Hong Kong team in the first ever World Cup, and they actually got to the quarterfinals. They beat Sweden and Russia, and then played two chaps you know well, Rodney Morris and Earl Strickland in the quarterfinals, and were beaten by them. So it was a very good start to the history of the World Cup for Hong Kong. But then they lost in the first round on their next seven appearances. In fact, the only match they've won since that inaugural year was in 2019 when they beat Japan in the first round. Lo Ho Son was part of the team. And they pushed Austria close in the second round at a time when the Austrians were dominating the tournament. So 10 previous World Cup appearances. We've only got past this first round twice. Well, that four ball he just shot shows me a lot of how he's feeling. That was really clean and a shot you can easily hit thick. And I'll tell you, we always talk about how global this sport is. Maybe not. Maybe none any more than nine ball pool. And we know Q Sports in Asia, period, right? Just always strong performers. Yeah, this was the pairing last year for the first time and got a tough draw, faced Poland in round one and were beaten 7 4. Yeah, Poland we'll see later. And I'm very interested, of course, the Polish contingent. Very close uh, group, knit group, right? But I'm interested if a few things go wrong because Zelensky, right? He can sometimes be a little negative, you know? He's, he's kind of like, uh, he runs both ways. He runs on really nice high emotions and then at times can get down on himself. And I'm wondering if, with a partner and Conrad being a great guy, how things will go with, for them. Yeah, they play Serbia in the third and final match of this session. Well, again, looking very clean with the run out. Not really ever threatening the shot cold. clock. We saw many beeps go off in day number one, and Hong Kong, China looks very prepared and very comfortable with each other. Now those adjustments Oh, we talked about this type of shot earlier, me and Carl, that, of course, with the tough equipment, when the cue ball falls near the rail, and it seems like when they're on the nine, these are no gimmies. Not entirely dissimilar to the nine ball the Australians missed last night with a chance to beat Austria. That was a bit tougher than this. But whatever the similarities, a different outcome, straight into the heart of the pocket. That's back-to-back -back break and runs. And now they go two clear at 3-1. Hong Kong are here with Wayne Griffiths, who's a big feature in their national coaching system, which is supported by the state over there. Wayne, the son of 1979 world snooker champion.
Terry Griffiths. There you can see that 2006 performance when they got to the quarterfinals. This pairing looking for their first win after going out in round one last year. Yeah, so far really punishing that mistake by the Dutch team. China to break. Kind of wonder Leading what it's going to look like when one. they get back to the table. That's always the thing as well. Not only have you handed the opportunity to them, you must be sitting there thinking, if we'd potted that three, we could have been having all this and be in control of this match. Low ho, some to break. 3-1. And both of those really nice breaks in the last two racks didn't look like a fluke, so expect another good one. Oh, the one missed barely. The corner. So three going to cover up the cue ball. Not sure if he can get at the one, but he will attack, whether it be straight on or with the short cue. And it's the type of jump shot you may not even need the short cue because it's just a sliver of the eight. Now the problem is he's kind of straight on this one. Ball it has a little angle, so he should be able to get out for the two and definitely has a look. Noticed as we saw Loho Sum getting down there, that piercing he has in his ear, it seems to be the Hong Kong flag. Hopefully get a closer look at that. Yeah, well, all these teams very proud of where they come from. Got a lot out of that. Really kind of cheated the pocket on the one, cut it to the right, right part of that upper corner. That's what created a lot more cue ball movement. Nice, really, you can't say perfect, but should be good enough with a little high left spin. Doesn't need a whole lot of left and doesn't need to get too close to the three ball. Boy, Mr. Bosch had so much drama in that Spanish Open run. Looked to be on the way out in the last 32 against Oliver Shulnoki. Had a big lead against Juan Kwok Huang in the quarterfinals. Ended up going the distance in that one. And all the way in the semi-final against Pius Labutis before the drama of the final, in which he was 12-10 up and lost 13-12 to Dang Jin Hu. But he didn't get to that situation, JJ, by missing balls like that. Extension yeah, the goal. difference is the brand new felt, and it wasn't a bad stroke. Just the players got to recognize the ball deflects a little more with the slick table. The red three is no friend of the Dutch at the moment. They've both missed one now. Yeah, you won't see much speed on this kick shot. Just wants to knock this in and hold for the pink all the way down in the lower right. Huge shot in this match. I'll tell you, they could really put them on the cooker if they kick this in and get out. Foul shot. Wow, did, oh, in hand. you know, maybe expected not making the three, maybe not getting that contact. Didn't expect Start him going place. into the brown, though. And Netherlands, pretty fortunate they were facing two right-handers because that was an easy jump shot for a lefty. Well, they finally managed to pot that three. Took the easiest shot imaginable for it to happen. And now, very good chance for them to get back to one behind. Oh, my. Just not seeing things correctly at the moment. Well, it's got to be a strange feeling for him, because normally when you come close to winning the biggest title of your life and having the best day of your pool career... You don't have to go back to that venue until 12 months later, but he's back in it three days later. Probably a sense of anticlimax after all the drama and the huge crowd of Sunday night. And he's having a bit of a shocker here. Yeah, and I think, you know, really, you know, three kind of inexcusable misses. But give it to Hong Kong, putting the heat on the Netherlands here early. And I'll tell you, 4 1 is a. Huge lead in this race of seven. Of course, nothing's protected in these leads, but got to feel like Hong Kong could add to that the way they're breaking the balls. 
Now, Robbie, his technique, in my opinion, sets up perfect for the slick table. Really good timing. Gets a lot out of the ball. Ooh. So the player's feeling the nerves. And the first time we've gotten to the beeps, that being the five seconds left on the shot clock. Turned into one of those racks that whoever loses it is going to have big calls for regret. Dangerous safety play here going this direction. Should lay it down. And he did. And the right hander, that's definitely the shot. If he was left, he may have edged the purple five and ran the cue ball near the nine. But now going to the air with the cue, the jump cue. tell you this is a really nice shot just considering the Netherlands struggling a little bit leaving them along near the rail with the cue ball he's not going to fancy this after the balls he's missed here yeah if you're not used to it easy to hit it thick oh, he hit it sweet it's not funny how often we see that a player misses a couple of easy balls then goes and knocks in a cracker like that yeah, I don't know if it's something in the brain with the best players in the world. We see it so often in all sports, really, after a big mistake is made. Seems like the first opportunity you get to make up for it. The best in the world seem to do it at a high rate. All these shots, you have to pay attention, though. You're pinching the cue ball here, drawn to the rail, whichever. All right, could use the second rail here. Could just come one rail at the nine. Major let off for the Ducks there. Somehow they've won the fifth rack. And they're just one behind. Now, on that. Boost the morale a bit. Netherlands played in all 15 World Cups. Not many countries have actually done that. We were finalists last year. They've been to the final twice. Niels Fine played in both of those, along with Nick Vandenberg. The Netherlands is actually the only country to have been in the final of the World Cup more than once without ever winning it. And they went close in both of those finals, 2013, beaten only 10-8 by Dennis Rocolio and Ivan Corteza representing the Philippines. And then the following year, they went all the way. Going down in the decider to the English pair, Darren Appleton, and our colleague, Carl Boys. The only times they've ever lost in the first round were 2008 against Belgium and then 2011 against Thailand, who went on from there to get to the final. It's a very consistent record, seven times in the quarterfinals, and in addition to those two runners-up finishes, they've also been in the semis with this pairing in 2019. Beat South Africa, beat the Americans, beat China, and went down to the Philippines in the last four. And this has been the pairing every year since 2018, and they've always got to at least the quarterfinals, including last year. When they ended the reign of the holders, Germany. It's a very strong record in the tournament. Rack six. But they've never Netherlands actually won it. With this pairing, they've got every chance. To two. Need to start playing a bit better, though. First round, though, is all about getting through it. And they've really improved their chances of doing that by closing to 3 2. Beisterbosch, the one player we've not seen breaking yet. Well, this is what I was talking about, a big breaker, and it seems like the firmer break so far in this World Cup has kind of been the ticket. Saw it many times yesterday with a few teams, a lot of success, making multiple balls on the break. And I'll tell you what, when you're able to unload on them, it just kind of gets you going as well. 
And no excuses here not to tie this match. Of course, there's always work to do, but the opportunity is there. Okay, keeping it simple. Come on one rail. Pretty good position shot. He's got to make a decision here. A little off angle. The only concern, and it seems like there's always going to be a little concern, no matter how the balls lay, is the brown septum here if he's going to stun towards the right. Wow, well, looks like he can push through and maybe play the purple in the upper right. Now, this is that stun shot I was talking about, so fell a little short. So a bit of a stretch and definitely no hanger. Such a great team competitor. The only European to have been on eight winning Moscone Cup teams. Only Earl Strickland and Johnny Archer for the Americans have got more on either side with nine. He's the only player from either side of the Atlantic to be MVP four times. Yeah, it's almost like the team pool always brought out Neil's best game. And been a great player for so long. It suits his personality, doesn't it? The team environment. He's such a people person, such a positive person to be around. Undoubtedly a Moscone Cup captain of the future. Yeah, and I don't know, of course, when he was a kid and what they did in the Netherlands, but I always liked it myself just growing up playing team sports and didn't start pool till way later. But the energy in the team sports and just, you know, something you can carry together, win or lose. So three balls down off the break, didn't leave them much to do. Made slightly harder work of it than they might have expected. But what it all adds up to is the first break and run of the match for the Dutch pair. From 3-1 down, they're back to 3-all.
been a mixed start to this first Rack round seven. match. A lot of quality. We've seen half of the racks so far, decided by break and runs, but also a lot of balls missed, mistakes on both sides. And what it all adds up to is that they're level at three all as Niels Fine breaks for the Netherlands in rack seven. Well, there's a leak in the table this afternoon. I'll tell you, that's three down off the break, it appears. And, of course, a very nice strike there from Niels. And a long-distance shot on the two. But the Dutch have to be happy with this after trailing three to one. Going forward here, where some may draw out of this on the slick table. You can get a little closer with top English, but it makes it a little more missable, I think. Wow, he really has missed so many balls in this match, and some of them by mo wide margins. Would have come into this looking to put the disappointment of the Spanish Open final behind him. Well, that will have to wait for the next match because whatever happens now, he's going to look back and say this hasn't been a good performance. Extension code. No, his first two misses really totally unexpected, and that one there was a. You know, a little more missable, but by the margin is the worry. Three balls down off the break for the second rack in a row for the Dutch. Got them a break and run in the previous rack. Took them no further in this one, though. All right, you don't expect him to roll this, so the two should come near the lower right corner with a little speed. Draw the cue ball out to the center of the table. Might make them both. That would be unfortunate. I uh, kind of, oh, really nice. Held it nicely. Thought that was going to be an issue. So, again, a very good sign of comfort to me from Loho Sum to play that combination with the lighter speed. Such a great run Loho Sum had at the World Masters getting to the final last year. Beat Dennis Graber. Shane Van Boning, who just won the World Championship. Abdullah Al Yusuf, who'd been to the semis of the Worlds. Then Mieszko Fortunski, who might have been starting to fancy it was going to be his time to finally win a big title. Pushed Joshua Filler hard in the final before going down 9-6. But it wasn't out of nowhere. As we were saying, it was a pretty good year all round in 2022 for Lowe and hasn't made the strides forward since then we might have expected. Yeah, that final, he certainly could have won it, put himself in position. Got a couple things got away from him. And then, of course, Josh Filler doesn't make things easy. But yeah, he's really improved the backhand much more at 90 degrees straight up and down, which I thought that was the only kind of alarming thing I saw technique-wise from him. These are missable, believe it or not. Don't expect it, but every now and again. Another Hong bad Kong mistake for the Dutch. And Hong Kong have taken advantage to go immediately back in front at 4-3. Now, this is the first of six matches on this second day of the World Cup. We've got the Coe brothers up next, and they will be facing Finland. There's Mika Immonen, the sort of partner, Jan Uski. Another one of those matches where you would give both teams every chance. The unseeded team would not really be causing that big an upset if they were to win. Chinese Taipei, the seeded team, going into that one. We'll be seeing that rack up next. Eight. Poland against Serbia Hong then. Kong, China to break. A little later in the afternoon. Leading by four racks to three. Still plenty to sort out here. Robbie Capito at the table with his side back in front. Yeah, the worry if you're the Netherlands is every mistake has been punished by both teams. So expect another good break here from Robbie. And he's missed the one. Oh, shot. Yeah. Little commentator's curse there. And Ball in hand. Which is a real thing, it seems. Perfect. 
top place. And caught it a little thick. You could see the cue ball came one row past the side. That's not what the players are trying to do. And now ball in hand for the Netherlands. And you can't say a must out, but you got to feel like the momentum would certainly shift even more towards Hong Kong if they weren't to get out here with ball in hand. I'm going to take this opportunity to hit you with a question, Jeremy. Oh, oh boy. I want you to tell me the players who are in this World Cup who played in the first ever World Cup 17 years ago. And there's a reason why I'm asking it during this match. So that's a starter for you. Okay. Well, I'll go with Niels. Yep. Can you tell me how many? Well, I make it four. Four. Okay. I would say SVB. Nope. No? 2006, you yeah, said? Yeah, he didn't play in the opening. Oh, you're year. right. You're right. Um, let me think. Let me think. I've been told that Hannah, who's uh, in the truck as part of the production with Matchroom, she was there in Newport back in 06. Well, maybe she She's not one of the four asked. answers, though. Uh, Pretty sure she didn't play. Very capable at all sorts of things, but maybe uh, not a play. Oh, Mika Eminen, for yeah, sure. Yeah, very good, yeah. Um, oh, no. And it's been the red three for the team in orange. Just not releasing the cue. You don't aim that poorly as a pro. It's just the contact isn't being made because the swing is a little apprehensive. Extension apprehensive, goal. excuse me. All right, so I got two out of four. Let me Give me a minute. Well, and this is a clue in itself. There's one of them. You would never think of instinctively because he looks so young, but he's actually much older than he looks. Okay. Um, no, it wouldn't have been Alex Pagalion. I would because Efren and Bustamani are the ones that won the first World Cup. So. Yeah, and he was playing for Philippines in those days. Little D cell there on the curve shot. That's why it curved early on him. Place. Okay, I want to get this right. Well, so. th there's one that I'll be astonished and even more in awe of you than I already am, Jeremy, if oh, you get well, it. Well, I'm yeah. going to get it then. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see what's going on with the pool match here and let my brain kind of settle for a moment. Okay. Now we got Mika already. Yeah, Big shot Niels. here for Niels. I know it's a routine shot, but I was a little worried about that when I did catch a little rubber. Guess it could be David Alcady. It is. I mean, you can't believe he's yeah. been around for 17 years. Well, I Just looks so young. Remember meeting him in Vegas when he actually played the amateur pool league. That was about 2001, I think. 2002, maybe. Spanish team, I think, dominated Vegas that year. I'm going to give you a bit of help because it's so hard that I think you need it. Okay. It's someone we've already seen in this tournament. Oh. Yeah, John Moore, maybe. Oh, you're getting a bit of help from the truck now. But it isn't John anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, he would only have been, I don't know, 17 at the time? Yeah. Well, he's been a great player from Canada for a long time. And we saw him yesterday. We'll return to that in a moment, but serious business going on for the Dutch. Again in this rack, missed opportunities, mistakes. But it's the number nine seeds who once again have drawn level. It's now four all. Right, JJ, let's get this done before the next rack starts. Okay, give it to me. Okay, well, Bashar Hussein oh, okay. of Qatar. Now, I have to say that was a very cursory look I had earlier, so I'm fearing someone getting in touch to say there was actually somebody else, but I'm pretty sure it was just those four. You did really well to get three, actually. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Well, I did get a little help. Now 4-4 four, four between these two teams. So they can leave mistakes behind. It's a race to three now. Whoever gets on with it, most likely to advance. And 
both teams, even though that was a little unlucky to get snookered. I think a very playable curve shot there for Hong Kong and uh, Netherlands back at the breaking end. The last time, indeed the only time so far in this match, that Bosch broke. Pulled three balls rock and the Dutch ran out the rack from there. Four rocks each. Do it again and they'll lead for the first time since the end of the opening rack. Golden break, possibly. Yeah, always looked just a little bit too high for it. Yeah, and we'll see how Niels is feeling here. I think they do have a cross side bank on the two. Now you'll have to take on a nice cut shot on the red three. It, to me, isn't too terribly bad, but when you've missed a few balls, he may be looking more towards the safety. And that's just how pool goes. If he had knocked those balls in, I think maybe he looks a little more offensive here. Okay, he's going to give Hong Kong, I think, a little look at the blue two. Maybe not. So now they'll look at What's the two five look like going towards that right middle? Is it going off the nine maybe where they can kick up behind the blue two and get some action? I'll tell you another thing that's a possibility is the blue two may go towards the left middle as well. The only reason I'm saying that is, you know, maybe they have a look at the edge of the blue too, but what's really there? I mean, not much of a shot unless you're going to go ahead and attack to try and cut it in and just go into the red three with the cue ball. Got a bad feeling about the white ball here, though. Could scratch off the back of the red three. And it seems like, again, what we talk about every year, when the, when the beeps get into play, it really affects the queuing. That was always going to be tough. Boister Bosch going so close in the Spanish Open, as we said. He was very consistent in doing well in big events last year. Extension. Last 16 Extension of the UK goal. and US Opens. Last 32 of the European Open and World Championship. Already this year, he'd won bronze in the nine ball at the European Championships in Finland. So that run here last week did not come out of nowhere by any means. No, very talented player and always talked about amongst the players, like so many, when's the big, big win coming? It takes some stepping stones, though. I mean, like you said, he had some of those results. So it shows us no fluke what he did this past week. You got, you know, a step closer to that big title in a match you'll never forget. I'll never forget, I know that. So these are easy, but again, the, the easy ones are the ones that have gotten the best of this team so far. Yeah, that first ever World Cup that Niels Feyen played in with Nick Vandenberg, who he has since played in the final with on two occasions. They beat Scotland in the first round and then went out to Vietnam in the last 16. So it's a tournament that he's been a part of for a long time. Hasn't played in it every year. This man is his partner now and they're still looking to deliver that first ever Dutch World Cup win. They've got to get through the first round first. 
It's turned into a real battle. It's one in which, in a couple of moments' time, they should be leading once again. With the simplest of nines, Mark Feisterbosch oh, yeah, makes it four of the last five racks now for the Dutch pairing. And they lead at 5-4, looking for two more racks to move into the second round. Are the two-time runners-up, the Netherlands, taking control of this match at just the right time? Netherlands to break. They won the opening rack, but they didn't lead again until a few moments ago when they went 5-4 in front. Niels Feyen breaking in rack 10. sure if intentional but seemed like it he took a little speed off there interesting a dry break here at five four and a very playable safety and it should be a good one now you can play the cue ball behind the purple and the pink, or you can play the one behind the purple and the pink. Just kind of depends on how you want to play it. That was always the more obvious shot, and he got the cue ball nice and nestled up closely, so the jump shot very difficult. 
And you wonder, is the pink four and the five attached to where the pink doesn't play? Because if the pink doesn't play, you do not want to take a chance on this jump shot opening those two balls. That's a little bit of protection. Uh, it looks like the pink does play, so that's not really a, a situation. Great look there. Extension code. I would move the pink up the rail. I would put the pink, you know, just past the side, making it very difficult with the green six there. I think, I think they're overlooking one here. Not saying he can't get a, get over this and make one incredible shot, but odds are against him. Oh, great hit, great hit. It's almost, you forget how great the players are with the short cue these days. And, you know, with the two near the side and kind of playable in the middle of the table, do you take on this kick shot? The one's not that difficult coming just short of the green six, trying to kick the one in. He's going to play the safety, which is what most would do. Looking back to that previous shot, Jeremy, you might have tennis players who spend an entire session working on their serve. Golfers might spend a whole practice workout working on their chipping. So do pool players do that where they'll just stand and hit jump shot after jump shot for half an hour, an hour, two hours to get it as perfected as they can? Absolutely, and today's crowd does it much more than years ago. Just... The technology is so good. You can do so much more with the jump cues and a nice hit there from Niels. And in Asia, in some countries, they have, from what I hear anyways, like jumping day. <laughs> you know, that's all they do the entire day. They never really play with the playing cue or the break cue at all. Just practice variations of the jump shot. Yeah, you do. Long pot here on the one, but a it's shot he'll certainly ball. attack like a medium speed to come two rails for the blue in the right middle. Huge shot at 5-4. No real protection on a miss. Talk to Robbie a little bit. Love his stroke, but how you notice he never really stops the cue. He never settles it before the last strike, which is a little uncommon for for top players. Most have a little pause at the cue ball before the last stroke. Yeah, and when that isn't your habit, even if he decided he wanted to change it, it would be extremely difficult to do. Yeah, I think, you know, worked with a lot of players that were in the same position. Skyler used to be have that same issue. It just takes a little work, but I think it's very important. I think Mika has problems at times, you know, now in his later years because of the same thing. Maybe when the nerves are high, the stroke gets going. It's almost like a wind-up it becomes, and that's something you want to avoid. It feels good, but again, feeling good and what works really under pressure, two different things. I guess the challenge of trying to get a player to change that, it's not so much technical, it's just psychological. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to make it uncomfortable at first, almost a longer pause. And then once they get comfortable, it becomes their pause and they decide what really feels good. Not all, all are the same, but if you look around, it's almost like golf when you waggle. You never go straight from the waggle into the swing, or very rarely anyways. You always settle the golf club. We'll see it with Niels, and like I said, probably 95% of the pros have that little pause at the cue ball. Now the pause in the back of the stroke, that, you know, that goes from player to player just depending on what your technique is. A little tricky still. You see that grouping right there with the 7, 8, 9. So he's going to have to play some nice position from the 6 to the 7. Either falling very straight or much more of an angle. He's going to play the straight one. 
So here, are you comfortable with the little draw stroke for the seven in the side, or do you want to draw back above for the seven in the lower left? And it looks like he really doesn't even have to draw it. Maybe two inches, three inches max. Oh, that's a nice shot there, even though it looked very routine. One that could get away from you, both on the light or heavy side. When you look at their performance overall, Jeremy, they'll know they'll have to play better if they're to get the World Cup win that they've come here for. But particularly in a team event like this where you're trying to settle into the different way of playing and become fully comfortable with each other once again, more than ever really. In the opening round, performances don't really matter. It's just about staying in it. You can always improve as the rounds go on. And so for the first time, the Netherlands are too clear. That's 6-4. Yeah, and the good thing for the Dutch team, it's really been just some easy shots, you know, whether that you know, could label to a little bit of nerves, of course, good look at both teams there. One much happier than the other at the moment. Well, when the Dutch were sitting there after Fyans miss on the three in an early rack, which proved so costly. They looked very tense, but totally different atmosphere about them now. Two of the friendliest guys you could ever meet. It would be a very popular success if they did win the World Cup. And I think, you know, the fact that Dutch have been to a couple of finals before, this pairing have been to the semis. I think they're only thinking of winning this. They're not here for a good week. They Rack want to 11, go all the way. Netherlands to break. Well, especially after Weisterbosch, right? That big run at the Spanish Open just a few days ago. And it is the 29-year-old from Eindhoven who breaks with his Dutch team on the hill. Really big break shot. Eindhoven, a couple years ago, our Team USA, actually 2018, we all traveled and played a Euro Tour event in a small town right outside of Eindhoven. Really nice place. Yeah, best known, I think, for the football team, PSV, former champions of Europe. Yeah, and I'll tell you, this is similar to a shot he had earlier, and I think it was game number two, possibly, maybe game one. Is he going to take on the cut? Very playable shot here. And just as he knocked it in before, very clean and a little bump on the red three, so close to your work. A heavy angle, the pink near. A bit to think about here. Looks like it's a cuttable ball. Of course, the cue ball, anytime you're thin, is going to have a lot of speed. Session cold. So he may have to run into the pink four. I'm not sure. Well, it looks like he actually could throw this in, kill it. This would be a pretty shot if he pulls it off. This would be low right with the tip position. Trying to bring the cue ball below the purple and then let the right English check and come straight across just a little above the eight with the cue ball. All right, got in behind it somehow. I think it is a playable pink. Mentioned that the next matchup will be Chinese Taipei against Finland. And the winners of that match will play the winners of this one. And he's got to check the cue ball off the side cushion here with a little left spin. Oh, he caught it thick. And these deep shelves on the Rassen will kind of show their teeth a little more and more as the event moves on. I think just Neil's got a little concern with the cue ball there and just lost a hair of focus on the pink four. 
Now, Loho Sam in another situation. Oh, excuse me. It's Pito at the table. It's got to be a kick shot here, and he's got to do it softly, really. You don't want to lose the cue ball following it in behind the pink. If you do make the pink, you're going to have a bit of a tester on the purple, but it's now or never for Hong Kong. Oh, he's hitting this with speed. This is super dangerous. Tough shot. Shot. Very possibly their last shot. Start the cup, please. Should draw this out just between the five and nine with the cue ball. Nearly missing the purple. Mr. Bosch would have loved the feeling of potting the winning nine ball in the Spanish Open final on Sunday night. Scant consolation, but it will be Meister Bosch who delivers the winning ball if they do finish it out here. Yeah, perfect two rail position play from Niels. Got his opponent about as perfect on the screen six as he could. Just a little draw stroke down below the nine. Things were looking good in this match for Hong Kong when back-to-back -back break and runs put them 3-1 in front. But they won only one rack really after nice that. The Netherlands are off and running. Two-time runners-up in the World Cup of Pool. They're into the last 16. They've won by seven racks to four.
The Netherlands are through to round two of the World Cup of Pool. A 7-4 victory over Hong Kong, China. Right. Hong Kong have been three racks to one up in that one, but the Netherlands duo of Mark Beisbosch and Niels Fion came back to take the victory. Smiles all round. Carl Boys is alongside me, and, and Carl, as expected, it's fairly even on paper, that one. Yeah, the big one that stands out for me there, eight missed pots for the Netherlands, just three to Hong Kong, China, and they won 7-4. Obviously, I think Niels got away with a couple where he missed, didn't leave Hong Kong, China anything easy, but that is actually unbelievable. So they've dodged a little bit of a bullet there. Listen, we knew Lo Ho Son, Robert Capito, two young, talented players. It was always going to be a tough match, but Netherlands can kick on that. Yeah, you need a little bit of luck sometimes in this game. Let's hear from the Netherlands team, shall we, there with Jeremy. Well, good win, guys. Y'all broke the ball as well, but a few easy ones got away from you. How'd you feel out there? Yeah, we just miss a couple easy shots, like uh, we missed all five shots or something. Um, I think it's a little different table than the diamond table, but the speed is around the same. But uh, we managed well in the end and we get the win. So. Yeah, we have a couple days off now, time to regroup on a few of those. What's your plans? Yeah, more days off. Only had five days off so far. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, you know, practice a little bit more here. We didn't get any chances to practice on these tables, so that's good now. We can work a little bit here. Just try to relax, you know. Uh, personally, I think for, for a tournament like this, you know, it's like a world championship for doubles. I think a race to seven is a little goofy the first two rounds. They got, I think they should really change something up, mix something up there to make that a little better because it's uh, it's a lot of pressure on every player and you see some crazy misses and uh, also some some great shot making but uh, you know we got to focus on our thing, play a little better next one and just uh, stay in the tournament. Yeah well great team and uh, I look forward to watching y'all. Good luck. Thanks, Thanks Jeremy. Thanks Jeremy. So the Dutch team go through to round two. It's Chinese Taipei against Finland up next. And Carl, it's a really interesting matchup, isn't it? Because this exact Finnish duo won this tournament in 2012. And for Chinese Taipei, represented by the Co brothers, who are just two incredibly talented young men. Yeah, and obviously the two brothers, aren't they? Ko Pin Yi's having a fantastic season. They're obviously going to gel well together. They might tournament pick from uh, the beginning. Well, listen, Finland, they've won it before. They obviously know how each other play, so they're going to really take it to Chinese Taipei. I think this will be a close match. It's going to be a stressful watch for you then, Carl, with that big state. All right, let's get to it. It's Chinese Taipei against Finland. Races to seven are so tightly fought in round one of the World Cup of Paul. Carl is in commentary for this one with Phil Yates. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, the top half of the draw is very tough indeed. Netherlands through. They will now play the winner of this one. Finland and Chinese Taipei have won this event in the past. They have the pedigree, they have the players. Two world nine ball champions right. on show in this match. To break. But two very capable number twos. One of them being Petri Makinen, who breaks in the opener. Petri, very good breaker of the balls. One of his strengths. Needs to go for imminent. It was a good part, but the nine ball right in the way. Extension called. Yesterday, I thought in terms of pure quality, Carl, the best performance was arguably produced by Albania. And one of the reasons that they played so well, their number two, Vassar Spahiu, was outstanding. 
I think the, the gap between Immanen and Mackinnon is closed now since they first teamed up in this event. They both need to fire at the same time. Well, it's a big, big mistake. There was a big margin for ever there for Finland on the opening shot. It's gone wrong, and look at the balls now. Smooth queuing, the brothers, that's what they bring to the table. Deliver the cue very nicely indeed, get a lot out of the cue ball. Pride themselves on good cue ball control. In this format, it's okay making mistakes if they're difficult when you're kicking out or, you know, you're faced with a really difficult pot. But when the balls are all there and, you know, the pros would knock these in with ease in practice, it's when you make them mistakes. Just landed a little funny here on the eight, a bit of a weird angle. Extension cord. I think the way forward, Carl, if you've got the extension, use it. Just a reminder, it's a 30-second shot clock with one 30-second extension, not per player, per team. Oh, he was OK, he played off the right jaw. Absolutely plumb on the nine. Imminent's Sorry, positional Chinese misjudgment Taipei. proved costly. The jump from Imminent did not contain Chinese Taipei, and the Co brothers ran out to take a 1 0 lead. Before the match, we spoke with these two ever smiling siblings. I'm feeling very happy because I can play again uh, with my brother that I work out of pool. So. Um, I'm looking forward to our, our match. Uh, me too, I'm feeling very good because this tournament is a very good tournament. So I'm playing this tournament, very exciting. Finland, uh, Mika is experienced player, so we need to um, be uh, careful to play uh, this tournament. But uh, we will do our best play. And just focus every ball and I hope I can play good. Play well. <laughs> Last year we get the semi-final. We get. Uh, I hope I this year I can. We can win the champion. Yes, I have a strong opener, so I think I can champion. <laughs> we can champion. <laughs> Chinese Taipei to break. We Being can champion. They can most certainly. And the elder brother, who is breaking off, has won this event before. 2015 at the York Hall in Bethnal Green. He and Chang Yulong defeated England. Mark Gray and Daryl Peach in the final 10-8. Has to be remembered as well. Carl, that the week before last, Koping Chung came very close to winning a matchroom nine ball ranking event in Bucharest, Romania, lost by the odd rack in 21 to Konrad Yuzhushin in the final.
Yeah, missed the eight ball in the final rack. Which gave Conrad the victory. In the first match of the day that we've just witnessed, the Netherlands nearly missed a couple of balls and left them over the pocket with the ball in front snookering their opponents. Hong Kong couldn't make the most of it. This looks a little easier. Or well, maybe it wasn't. Maybe that two ball was a lot Fast deeper track. than we thought. So we've seen that a lot. Players ball missing the ball over the pocket. Getting a little lucky. Snookering. But nobody can kick the ball in. Mika's baffled. An extraordinary record of consistency, Chinese Taipei in the event. Apart from that one win in 2015, they've reached seven semi-finals all since 2010, including, as the brothers told you in their interview, last year. Just wants to make sure here, whenever Extension you call. can't see all the pocket, you, you, your mind plays a few tricks, you feel like... The eight balls in your way. He's just building himself up for the shot. Well, you can see he's got loads of room. Milking it. I'm going to make a statement here, Phil. I think Coping Yi is the best player on tour at clearing the table when the balls are all in open play. And the reason for that, apart from a very high base level of ability is that his concentration is second to none and his nerve nerve of course was the thing that held the Australians back last night prevented a seismic upset at the expense of Austria These are two of three pool playing brothers. The other one is Ko Ping Han, who took part in the, the recent UK Open. Another example of why I believe Ko Ping Yi just constantly clears the balls when they're all spread around the table in the open. You could see the shot from the six to the seven. Landed perfectly straight, so his brother just plays a little stop shot. <laughs> 2 0, it is very efficient, the not the start that Finland wanted. We caught up with the 2012 champions at the World Cup prior to the match. excited to be here. Uh, Petra and I uh, haven't played in a couple of years uh, of the World Cup, but we have that past experience and uh, we won it before, so can't go really wrong with the winning formula, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the tournament kicked off with uh, Spain and Philippines. It was crazy, crazy good level. The match was like world class. The level is high and it's good to watch the other teams as well. Well, yeah, the the Co brothers are obviously a formidable team, and uh, we uh, expect nothing less than excellence from them. So we got to step up to the plate and uh, deliver, deliver the knockout punch. KO. <laughs> there was no easy draws, as as there was only seeded teams for us. But so just play the play the game and play how how we can. So it, it can't go wrong. We came to win. Getting two racks to nil. Last year, Immanen partnered Jani Uski, and they had a very good first round win, 7-1 over Austria, then beat Estonia 7-5 before losing in the quarterfinals to Singapore. Get the impression, though, the Finns are really up against it here, Carl. Yeah, they're up against it on paper before the match, but 
They had a glorious chance in rack one. They had a small chance in rack two. We seen it with the Aussies late last night against Team Austria. They really took it to Team Austria. Yes, they fell short in the end. But if you put the big teams under pressure, they can crumble. But you have to take your chances. Sounds simple. And that sentence with a few words substituted could also apply to the Spanish Open. If you put the big names under pressure, they can crumble. Then, of course, the minnows get on the, the hill, get close to victory, and they're prone to crumbling. That, though, is a mistake. Yeah, this blue two is quite thin, the pot. So I don't think he can hold the cue ball. I think he's got to get the cue ball bouncing off two rails. So off the first rail on the right, then he'll come over to the left rail and back out into the middle. Oh, he's done well. Good shot. Very good shot. Because he was always flirting with the left side pocket. tried to come across the face of the pink four didn't play to bump it these are tricky little shots Phil because he's got to play it with a bit of bottom left spin pace is key Extension call. he's going to play for the purple five in the same pocket He's forgot to pot his ball. Chance number three has gone. And this time, unlike when Chinese Taipei left a ball over the same pocket, the jump is available. Maybe the gap is. Look at that. Yeah, you don't see this very often. This is very interesting. Well, he's playing the jump, but it does look like the cue ball goes through, but He's got a better view. He always looks better from the side. The Cole brothers are up. Foul stroke. Ooh, he landed it on the gap. Ball in hand. I Please think, you know, the, the cue ball would have squeezed through there, but it was such a, a tight squeeze, they elected to jump, and it didn't work out. Didn't get the necessary elevation. Nowhere near. Yeah, that replay there, it just looks like you could go through the gap. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Well, this is a must-win rack now. Surely the boys have got to clear the table here. This layout is the definition of routine. If anything's routine in the World Cup. Niels Fine was making the point that these race to sevens are very short and consequently extremely cutthroat. I think he, he missed the point, though, in many respects. He was saying they should be lengthier. Well, maybe in terms of identifying... The more consistent team, yes, but in terms of drama, no. And that's what it's all about, TV entertainment. Look at the drama and the unexpected nature of that miss. Well, what Team Finland would give to start this match again? Been building up, waiting for this moment to get out there and play, practising. And then when you get out in centre court, the mistakes creep in. Extension call. Yeah, as a form of player fill, I know what Niels means, that bit more 
but the lengthier race means you can relax a little bit but that will come it's only the first two rounds that are raised to seven come the quarterfinals we're up to nine Yeah, I think this applies in all Q sports. What's best for the players sometimes isn't best for the viewing public. They love these sprints because it's pool on a knife edge. As is this shot. And the knife is sharp enough. Co, Co could be in the process of putting Finland to sleep. 3 0 it is. It is 3-0 to Chinese Taipei, Chinese Taipei in this Taipei. first round fixture in the World Cup of Pool. Of course, they get to break off as well in rack four. And the worrying aspect for Finland, it could be 3-0 the other way. Do the other shot on the blue two. Yes, they do. 
So a little touch on into the top left corner pocket. Got to draw the cue ball back for the red three. If you get this one right. Rack four may not be far away. Isn't it amazing? I know, Carl, I could tell the way you were talking. You were sitting on the fence when the, the ball stopped rolling. You weren't quite sure whether the, the two would go past the four. Neither was I. Then we saw the overhead view, and it was obvious it did. That overhead camera tells you an awful lot. This is the key shot now. Kubel's got to travel a little bit, so he's got to land on the purple ball. That's our eye in the sky again. Last year they had a very straightforward 7-2 win over Argentina in the first round, the Chinese Taipei. But with all due respect, Finland on paper were tougher opposition. Now leaving the cue ball close to that side cushion wasn't what he wanted. Yeah, big brother testing little brother. Test passed. Not easy for Team Finland. Sat in the chair watching the Cole brothers run the rack out. They know they've had chance after chance. How different this match could have been. And if they get to the table, the next visit's going to seem even harder because of the scoreline. This is as straightforward as you like. 4-0. Chinese Taipei breaking and running, looking very good indeed. And of course, we know they have previous. They've got the pedigree to go all the way and lift the trophy. Now, this event began in Newport in Wales in 2006. These are the most recent winners no event in 2020, of course, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But it is very much a mainstay of the nine-ball tour schedule. Finland were champions in Manila in the Philippines in 2012. Chinese Taipei, they broke through in 2015. Finland, by the way, came very close to winning the second edition of this in 2007. So close, in fact, they lost 11-10 in the final to China. Li He Wen and one of my favorite players, Fu Jianbo. Claiming a dramatic deciding frame. Getting four victory. to nil. Okay, glimmer of hope for the Finnish pair. No pot on the blue two. They're going to need things like this to happen to help them try and get back into this match. Just going back to what I was saying there. Do you remember him, Carl Fujianbo? Great shot maker. Great character. Yeah, fantastic player. Wonder if he still competes. Wonder if we'll ever see him again. The World Nine Ball Tour, a little bit like Dang, really. You know, he was playing years ago, and now China's opened back up. Come to the Spanish Open and won it. I thought it was great to see the way he was acting in the final, Phil. You know, he was getting involved with the crowd. Obviously, players can be very serious at the table. He decided to embrace it, and I think that worked a treat. Yeah, I think that was the appeal of that final. 
both players weren't mechanical. They didn't play the percentages. It was attack, attack, attack. And that's what kept the, the crowd involvement. It was a, a captivating sort of match, one that broke the mould, but one I'll remember for quite some time. So Eminent pleading with the two to hold up. Yeah, the fact that cue ball's on the rail is what is going to make this shot a little trickier for Ko Ping Chung. Well, he's missed that by a long way. Right, it's now or never, isn't it, Phil? They've got to make something happen here. They've got to run the table, try and put a little two-pack together. This is the beauty of winner breaks. If players get off to a bad start, the winner breaks does allow them to run a couple of racks just to put the pressure back over. Amateur pool players around the world, a lot of them think alternate break is a fair away, but I'm afraid it isn't. For this exact reason, if we was playing alternate break here, Finland have got off to a poor start. They'd be really up against winning this match in alternate break. The fact is, the winner break is still going to keep them in this match. I'm a great believer in sport that if you have success, it deserves reward. And of course, that's what the, the winner break yeah, format gives. Call. You might make the argument that alternate break artificially keeps matches close. But as Carl said, winner breaks, well, that keeps the flame burning, the flame of hope. Now he caught that one too thin, that's why the cue ball ran on. Is the nine in the way for the five? See, caught a goodly portion of that jaw, even though it went in. And it's another miss. Got away with it, but it's still going to hurt. That was high tariff from Eminem. These middle pockets are brutally tight, and playing that one with bundles of running side for shape on the six. That was asking a lot. Extension cool. <laughs> 50 years of age now, Carl. Mika Eminen. Looks good on it. Yeah, he doesn't look his age. But the issue is what we've seen is as the player starts to get a little bit older, probably around 45 and upwards, the, the misses seem to creep in, Phil, don't they? Good safety. Yeah, as in snooker, certainly. The king of the 80s, Steve Davis, found that with advancing years. The king of the 90s also, Stephen Hendry. But in more recent years, being in your 40s, no impediment to success. Needs this to bounce. He's got to play the bank shot here. Saying that, the safety shot, it's very easy. These boys like to play the percentage game. Just get the five on the bottom rail. You've got the eight and the nine ball. Yep, here we go. This is shy of pace, though. 
And it was the wrong line. That was a fantastic pot. Very thin. Razor thin, and now Mackinnon, who missed a, a similar shot to this across the other short rail on the four earlier. Oh, well, how about that one? Sure. Yeah, I would think he was playing the six ball on the back rail. Maybe, you, you know, you know the middle pocket's there. But I'm sure it was the safety. Imminent with another thin cut. Cue ball four rails for the eight. This time he's overdone this one. The second time Finland have overcut a seven ball. That one, though, much more testing than the seven that Mackinnon missed early. Good pot from Coping Yi, Coping Chunk needs another good one. Always look easier on TV these, but when you're behind it, they're always quite thin. Oh, that that should not go in, Phil. It just skidded in. That was a millimetre away from remaining on the table. That though was right into the heart of the pocket. It's a very strange 5-0 scoreline that doesn't really reflect the exchanges we have witnessed. Finland must be thinking, how can we be on the verge of a whitewash given the chances we've had and the balls we've potted? Chinese Taipei, Ko Ping Yi and Ko Ping Chung. Last year they were semi-finalists. We've talked about that win over Argentina, then they beat Greece and the Netherlands. Of course, Netherlands lie in wait in the last 16 should they win this one. And the way things are going right now, it would be easy for the Finns to be a little demoralised. Yeah, Back six. Chinese Taipei lost Chinese to, Taipei to break. the eventual winners, Spain, to in the last four, 9-4. Lots of people believe they could go all the way this time, and I'm one of them. Dry break. Messy open shot. Yeah, the one ball caught both points. Imminent knows all about how to cope with pressure. He's a twice US Open champion. He's won the World Nine Ball Championship and he's represented Europe in the Moscone Cup on 13 occasions.
played the carrot. Couldn't control the one ball though and the cue ball. Yeah, that was all about leaving distance. Well played. That will keep the pressure on their opponents because there's been a lot of missed balls. This is not an easy one. Got to take this on, though, you feel. Extension call. Cool. Again, the overcut costing the fins. Or at least it probably will cost the fins. Now you start to think about will they become the second team to suffer a whitewash? Qatar were the first against Great Britain last night. Usually very reliable with the cue ball. Wanted to miss the red ball. Caught it full. Left his brother on the rail. Knows he can cheat a bit more of the pocket. Than possibly last week. Just because the table's still playing. Brand new. Nicely done. Good shot. Not got there though, so Jump Q will be coming out. Jump Q, the used bill, is actually their own brand of Q. It's called the Cold Jump. They've had it designed, made. Co designed by both of them. We keep saying it's, it's another gilt-edged chance to get off the mark. Ample Q power. Petri Mackinnon possesses, so shape on the seven should not be an issue.
Finland. It is a clean sheet, no more. <laughs> Nick Ehrman and putting up his arms in faux celebration. Finland off the mark. Chinese Taipei's lead slightly reduced at 5-1. Given the gorgeous weather we're having in Lugo, it might not be the best environment for a player called the Iceman. That's the nickname of Mika Immanen, and maybe that's borne out in the scoreline at the moment. This is one beautiful city in the region of Galicia. Immanen breaking off in rack seven with Finland 5-1 down. Oh, and that's compounded. Foul stroke. Yeah, he's disappointed because he's seen the cue ball go in, but then you could see him glancing at the table. It doesn't seem overly that bad. It could have been a lot worse. Because you can see the brown seven ties up. Two balls awkward. Ball in hand. Please start the clock. Yeah, they might be in some trouble, don't get me wrong, but it could have been a lot worse. This is a lot of force, a little bit tight to sort it out. I mean, 
Tosi jatkuvaa. Vaikea kun pitää vetää vasta sivari, niin. kun ei se niin takamaskin. No sit se pitää vaan ottaa tuntea. Extension cool. Sitten tulee aika paljon ylsää tosta. Mm. It's one of those tables, isn't it? That will take some sorting out, as will this escape. Foul strike. Two fouls. Ball in hand. Expected them to get a lot closer to that. Seem to be a mile away. Yeah, two fouls as well. Thought they would have played safe off the one ball. I think he's trying to pot the nine in the side and play the hook. But if you miss the nine, I think it's an easy kick. I think playing the hook on the one would have been a lot harder to hit. Finland, you're on two fouls. If you foul on this stroke, you will lose the rack. Well, he fooled us. Didn't chase the nine, did he? Play the hook. So you heard the referee. Finland missed this ball. They've lost the rack. Foul. Loss of rack. They didn't miss the two, but the scratch means it's loss of rack anyway. What a horrible way to lose a rack, especially when you're already 5-1 down. The three foul rule. We don't see it come into operation all that much. When it does, the player, the players, it affects. They can't help looking entirely crestfallen. Yeah, no. People who are watching maybe think that's a little harsh, but listen, Finland, no, that wasn't the best of efforts of the kick shot. He's trying to hit too full. Petri also was a mile away on his attempt. Maybe I'm just too harsh. For Two scratches and a kick. It sounds like a pub fight. Coming up next, it is Poland, one of the most talented pool nations in Europe, up against Serbia. That was Konrad Jozusin. This is Viktor Zelinski, Poland, another team. Rack eight. With a terrific Charles chance to break. of claiming the silverware. The there hill, are so many. Six racks to one. Finnish hopes hanging by a thread, greatly helped by the position of the six ball here, but even then it's looking a little bleak. Nicely cued to set up the combo. Key ball's close to the rail, so it's going to roll forward. So staying on the three ball may prove to be fairly difficult. Oh, we had a 
at a bit of an angle so he could roll forward. This is not looking good now. There was I thinking the six might save them. Forget that. Playing left-handed with a, a touch of check side. One of the genuine title contenders here in Lugo, flexing their muscles. Yeah, and I thought this match would be a lot closer. I thought it could have been tricky, but Finland, right from the start of the match, just not being with it. And in the end, it's been very comfortable for Chinese Taipei. That was a classy shot. And it should be the the end. So oh brother, what a trouncing. Chinese Taipei defeat Finland by seven racks to one. If they are successful come Sunday evening, no one in the world of pool would be remotely surprised. Uh, yeah.
Welcome back to the World Cup of Pool, where Chinese Taipei are through to round two. A brilliant performance from Ko Ping Chung and Ko Pin Yi, and a 7 1 victory for them over Finland. Jeremy Jones is alongside me, and Jeremy, I mean, the Co brothers are just very good at pool, aren't they? There's not much more you can say. They played a phenomenal game. Yeah, there's no one closer than those two when it comes to partners. And of course, Finland didn't have their best, didn't really apply the heat. That happens to all teams at some time or another. But the Co brothers are a definite contender for this title. We also saw three consecutive foul balls from Finland, which resulted in a loss of rack. It's not something you see very often at this level. Is that the pressure, perhaps, and just the intensity of this, this knockout format getting to them? Yeah, you don't see it at this level. A scratch on the break and a very uh, jumbled up rack is whenever your opponent will attempt to three foul you. And the kick shots are difficult out there on the slick table, and it just got away from Finland. Okay, let's just confirm the results so far this afternoon. Then the Netherlands are through after a 7-4 victory over Hong Kong and China. Chinese Taipei join them in round two. And our third and final match for this afternoon's session is Poland against Serbia. Okay, it's once again a race to seven as round one of the World Cup of Pool continues. Jeremy is in commentary for Poland against Serbia alongside Michael McMahon. Yeah, thanks once again, Hannah. Surrounding off our afternoon's entertainment in Lugo, a country which has played in every World Cup and been to the final before, faces one which has yet to win a match in us. Thank you, Eve. First rack. Team Poland to break. And Viktor Zielinski returning to the Polish fold after five years. We'll start it off on behalf of the number six seats. No, one sec, please. Oh, pretty decent break off there. Got the one down in the side. Cue ball got below the rack, so usually means if you do have a shot, nothing easy. Looks like the blue two is covered up to the top left corner, which would be ideal. Thank you. Please start again. Very difficult play into the left middles, especially because you take on a shot like that, you usually want something that's going to give you a reward as far as position on the next ball. And not easy. And so many great Polish players, and we've talked about it now for many years, and you got to believe that they, they sparred here and there with different combinations of of players and I wouldn't doubt as tight a knit group as they are probably kind of mix it up with all kinds of combinations anticipating who's going to get to be on that team. That's Lazar Kostic. He's the non-striking player, only 17 years of age. Alexa Peshelj at the table. And that's the difference right there on the first shot. The table's really slick. Sells, who of course played in that Spanish Open and a very, very good young player and a player that's had some results on the big stage. Not as deep as he wants to go in some of these events, but definitely has had some success and has taken some really tough losses in big moments as well. well I've rarely, if ever, seen anyone so distraught after a match as he was. Joshua Filler beat him in a Hill Hill finish in the UK Open quarterfinals last year. I was going to say a little fortunate with the cue ball, and it was, but the two ball dressing up in the middle, and of course, a, a ball they should make, but 
Cue ball's going into a lot of traffic trying to get back for that red three. Yeah, what a match that was at the UK Open. And almost really was the match that kind of got Josh in the limelight, right, to win that ma to win that event. It wasn't a huge comeback, but just the drama at the end and the shots were made kind of reminds you of what happened at that World Nine Ball Championships with that comeback with... Uh, Mika and Shane, and just kind of set Shane up to win the event, as did that match at the UK Open for Josh Filler. Yeah, he was so distraught after the match, Peychelles. I saw him outside the venue afterwards, and it was a really hot day, and he was just standing there completely distraught. I think there were even tears, and Jason Shaw actually saw him and brought him out in London for the evening. Which was a really nice gesture from one of the world's best. And you could say Serbia, even though you can see very, very good players and very capable players. Got to consider a decent little underdog, even though it is a short race of seven, but looking good, look confident as well. Huge day in the young life of Kostic. Only 17 from Uzisa. Apologies if that's not entirely the correct pronunciation, but that's where he's from. He played in the FSR Junior Open last week and got to the quarterfinals, beaten by Nuno Santos of Portugal. He went on to reach the final, where Fu Juan beat him. Yeah, probably our youngest leader of any team, Alexa Pasels, but man, such a good-hearted guy and always has a smile on his face and positive words for really anyone he passes by. And that'll serve well for his young partner. That won't necessarily, but we've seen mistakes by all teams today, it seems like. I think we had a lot of it yesterday as well. A lot of really unexpected balls being missed, and that's just the nature of team play. You're not just playing for yourself. You've got your teammates and everyone back home on your shoulders as well. Yeah, and what you'll see with shots like that, similar to the four ball that was missed by Team Australia when they had another chance to win their the last rack. And what happens is the reason why they're so common, those those misses and they're the same way is because the table plays a little different. It's a little slicker. So when you add that right English, the ball deflects a little more to the left and a lot of those thick misses. Really nice safety here and hard to get a lot of speed on this being elevated. Hook the ball a little too much. No contact ball in hand. And please start the clock. Of course, it's double, so you don't get to play at the exact pace that you're used to. But I'll tell you, a team that can beat you real quickly if you make a few mistakes, and that's Team Poland. They definitely get on with it. Yeah, first time it's been this pairing. Zelinski last played five years ago, as I was saying. He was only 17 at the time. Yasushin played the year after that, and here they are for the first time. As a pairing... Bad miss on the seven by Alexa Peixelge, and although it didn't immediately lead to Poland winning the rack, that was the long-term impact of it. So Poland lead 1-0. We had a word with them before the off. World Cup was one of the best events uh, throughout the year, so we just can't wait to play our first match. It's the only event throughout the year where we play doubles and we are used to play individual games but you know it's almost the same but it will work out good. For me it's not the same because I'm left-handed player, Victor is right-handed so I start to think to, to make position to right hand not, not always to left hand but uh, yeah for me it's really good to play with, with Victor. Every match is tough here especially the first and the second round it's only race to seven everything can happen. So we just have to focus from the really very first rack and try to play our best game to be able to win the match. We'll see. Hopefully the luck will be on our side. And It's only a race to seven, so <laughs> everything is possible. Leading by one rack to zero. 
Both of these players went out in the second round on their only previous appearance. Yasushin with Mateusz Niagotski in 2019. They were beaten by Britain in the last 16. And the year before that also with Sniagotsky. Zelinski had gone out in a hill hill finish in round two against Austria. Yeah, and I'm assuming Zelensky making it at such a young age after those very young Euro Tour wins he had. Yeah, became the youngest ever winner of a Euro Tour event at the age of 16. Push out cold. Yeah, he had commented, Conrad had, about the combo of a lefty and righty. Now the good advantage he has for a team that does have that situation is Zelensky, a very tall man, right? So he can overcome some things if a mistake is made mentally with a position play. A difficult push out here, and it's going to be the cue ball near the rail. He's looking there. You can see just right of the purple five, and what what he's looking at here is. If you do pocket the ball, he's trying to put you on an angle to where it's kind of a scratch shot if you decide to take on the upper Sabia, upper right corner choice. with the one ball. So it should be something off the left side of the one kind of running the cue ball two rails back to where it's kind of at now using the three and the nine. Peixel is currently number 28 in the world rankings. In a decent year, last 16 of the World Championship, last 32 of the UK Open a few weeks ago. And runner-up in a smaller ranking event in Spain in April to Wojciech Szewczyk of Poland. Yeah, this, I don't know if it's going to get the snooker or not. It looks like the pink four is the, the helper. Probably not totally intended there, but I think he was a little worried about losing the one ball across the table. Maybe just a little let up on the stroke. First time I saw Alexa Pacelge was at the Kremlin Cup, actually. 2019, I believe it was. Really young. Made it to the semifinals. I was super impressed. Playing a pretty mild soft safety there. You know, one thing they can't get too involved in is the experience of Pacelge's partner. I don't think that was the case here playing the soft safety, but that may come up. He looks totally unfazed by it all. You have to say, at 17, you might expect a few nerves being out there on the big stage. And not only that, but you're playing as part of a team for your country. None of that seems to have even registered with him, which is obviously the way you want it. Well, like I said earlier, Pacelj being the youngest probably team leader out here in this World Cup, and I think he's a good one, even though at a young age and learning a lot still himself. Uh, went for the cut shot. Going to get a little fortunate, maybe. It's close. I think there's a sliver of the one, but I don't think he can really cut it in. Probably a pretty full eclipse here using the red three. I have to curve this, and now he's got a level Q. So he can get at the one, trying to bank it back down using the seven. Right, he came behind the six. And that's a little more comfortable shot early than rather than trying to kill the cue ball behind the seven. So pretty smart play. Had a chance to get behind the green six for more of a Devastating snooker. Should keep pulling off the offensive shot, though. Now the 
one did come free, but long and straight and near the rail. And of course, not going to elevate the cue from here trying to draw the ball. So I wouldn't doubt, even though has a play offensively, I think they'll cross this over just because position on the three, very difficult. The youngster's just going to like this, I think, up onto the nine. First ever World Cup meeting of these nations. For the right to go through to the second round and play the number 11 seeds, Albania. They beat Peru last night, 7-3. Perhaps the best performance we've seen so far, JJ. Yeah, I think so. All the way around, breaking the balls. Um, you know, looking the part as well. Didn't Hopefully seem like they were nervous, not one Bond. bit, and very confident the way they played. I really don't remember one shot. mistake, I think, from Albania. Okay, we've already seen it in this World Cup, the importance when you're the outsider of taking advantage of your early opportunities. Set the right tone, get yourself involved in the match. Serbia have the chance to do that here. Yeah, and if you're a young team, and especially one being a little more inexperienced, you know, don't worry about perfect pulls so much. Try and get it a little flow going. I mean, you're always going to play position, and Pacell's just going to keep things in order as much as he can. You want your partner to get in that flow of knocking them balls in, right? That's where they're really going to have a chance to steal this match is if they just don't miss many. Serbia have played in the World Cup three times before. They've never got past the first round. Heavy defeats the first couple of times against Germany and Greece. But then last year, they very nearly got that first win. They were beaten in a hill-hill finish in the first round by Estonia. Peixelj was playing, along with Andrea Klasovic, who's been part of all three of those Serbian World Cup teams in the past. Yeah, I was a little worried about that shot. Just, I think Pacelles knew the cue ball was going to arc a little bit off that top cushion. He got past the side. That was the worry. And now a couple chip-ins to get on the board. So Peixelj makes it one all on behalf of Serbia as we get their thoughts on playing in this World Cup. This year we changed the team a little bit. I miss my old body, of course, but I'm very happy to play with the youngest guy in Serbia and um, the guy with the most potential. So I'm looking forward to a strong game. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm honored to, to represent my country on this big event. I think it's, this is the biggest event in Metro calendar, so I'm very excited. We know the Pol that Poland is a very strong team. But we hope that we will show our best game and we are looking forward to, to win this match. Yeah, I know them quite a lot. We are in the scene actually for a couple of years. I know they are both really good. But I think that me and Lazar has, uh, have a very strong game and I hope uh, we can surprise them as we are the underdogs. At the end of the day, uh, you want to know that you gave all, of, all that you, you, you have. So, as Alexa said, give our best and hope for the best. One all there. Uh, Serbia's first break of this World Cup falls to Alexa Pacelj. Uh, very nice break off there and very good connection. A little action on the nine up the table. He's got a great shot on the two, but it's going to be difficult to get position on the red three with the green six and the black eight kind of interfering. Now this is where Pacelj does he does he kind of let his partner 
turn the cue ball loose, coming some three cushions around the table. You'd have to elevate the cue, but. Or is he just going to tell him maybe make this and we'll play some type of safety off the red? I like him attacking here. Sizing it up, seeing if they can check the cue ball below the black eight. I'm not sure if they can really. And that wasn't a miss. They were trying to play safe, putting the blue two underneath the three. You did so well, Jeremy, with the question earlier about the four players in this World Cup who played in the first one. So here comes another one. There are seven countries who have played in every World Cup. I'm going to give you a bit of time. Um, yeah. Well, it's Great Britain just to start out. Is that a... Well, I wasn't going to include that because it was England it was Scotland. or Scotland yeah, and yeah. even Wales one year. So other right. than them, there are seven. Okay, I'm going to go with the Philippines. And you would be wrong. Oh, wow. They've entered every World Cup, but there was the one they had to pull out of. Okay. So the U.S. is the next one I'm going to... Yeah. I'm going to put on there. I'm going to say Germany. Absolutely. Two-time winners. And I'm going to say Poland. Yeah. How many is that? Three? That's three. Oh, I'm a long ways away, but let's see what Alexa does here. Is this going to get away a little bit? No, pretty good speed. Uh, Finland, maybe? Finland? Oh, Finland. Sorry, yes, Finland. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to go with Chinese Taipei. No, they no. haven't played every year. They missed one. They missed one. Tuffy. Let's go with Hmm. Canada? No, Canada have not played in all of them. I guess that would be a silly answer with John and them are a little young. Yeah. Well, Canada have only missed one, so they're not far out. Okay. I've got to think for a minute before I just... Let's go with an answer. A good kick shot there from the youngster. Japan. Yeah, good chat. So what is that, four? That's five. You've only got two left. Two left. Okay. We'll give it a minute. I want to I go two for two on these last ones. Good effort there. Okay, we'll see the three and the eight really got tied up here, kind of in a nasty position to try and run out from. Any kind of safety here onto the green six, maybe? You have your extension. Yep, extension, please. Okay. No. Italy? No. Okay. Yeah, Italy pretty close, though. They've only missed one. I was trying to think of certain players. Was he trying to screw this cue ball back underneath the red? This could get away or be very good. Look at this. He did really nice. And he kind of bumped the red as well. So now the 3 8 very playable. I'll tell you what, you said you wanted to go two for two for the last two. So that's gone now after the okay, last guess. Yeah. So we're going to put you on your last life, Jeremy. You, you got to get the last two. Okay. Another wrong answer, and I'll give you the final two. You've done well anyway to get this far. The extension, please. Vietnam? No. All right. China. I should have guessed China, probably. But well, where are we? Oh, Spain. Spain. Yeah. And the other team, we commentated on them together earlier today. Please start the clock. Mm. The Dutch. Oh, the Dutch. Yeah, the Netherlands. I should have known that for sure. As many great players have they, they've had. So who was their original team? Spain. al and al did play. Uh, back in 2006.
surprising they just surrendered ball in hand without kind of trying to make the 3 8 much more difficult, that being Poland. Some baseball trivia coming from Michael tomorrow. Good luck with that. That's what I was going to say to you. Good luck with that. If the answer's not Joe DiMaggio, forget about it. And I still probably wouldn't get it right if it was. I'll tell you what, a little time at the table. The youngsters are getting a little more comfortable. Get used to this, by the way. No matter which country it is, it's getting younger. There's more players coming. I think the culmination of so many things with the World Nine Ball Tour, the and they can see how it's developing other players as well. A little flat here, so he's got to kind of shove the ball off the pink four with a little speed. Just to bring down the curtain on trivia time for this afternoon, it was Rafael Guzman was the partner for Al Cady in that first one in Wales back in 06. I'll tell you, a neighboring country that had a really nice Spanish Open is Portugal, and you never know, they may be in this event sometime soon. Yeah, they've played in it three times in the past, but without winning a match. Same record as Serbia, actually. Anyway, nice trip down memory lane there. Back in the present day, the Serbian team who are too young to have any idea what we're talking about with some of those names and facts from the past have a chance to lead for the first time here. And I kind of talked about it at the beginning, just get to where they're knocking some balls in. That's really how you make that upset is just don't miss much when you get the opportunity. Don't have to play exactly the perfect shot at all times. It's a game of choice anyways. At, you know, at a lot of level. Ooh. And there's that same thicker hit. And again, anytime you apply side, the ball deflects a little more. You don't expect it, especially with no experience. You talk about the nerves and settling in, and he looked pretty comfortable at such a young age. But it's moments like that which really test just how settled you are. It's easy enough when everything's going well. You miss a ball like that, it can be harder to keep your composure. And Conrad Yasushin has this to put Poland a rack ahead for the second time in the match. And Team Poland. It's a miss Thanks on the seven. And now it's Poland to lead 2-1.
tough start to this year's World Cup for this young team from Serbia. They could have won all of the first three racks, a couple of costly misses, including that seven that we saw Lazar Kostic break down on in Thank the previous rack. rack. Team Poland have allowed Poland instead the to get their noses in front at 2 1 as Viktor Zelinski breaks in rack four. Nice break off there, the one down in the side. Looks like the two's playable, cross side. Now the angle, I don't know if that really is easy to draw back and get position just because the black eight is a big ball. The cue ball will be kind of going in that direction. Yasushin has been in form recently. He's just won the tournament in Romania. Beating Koping Chung in the final. Good quality field there. Had a good year last year, quarterfinals of the European Open, last 16 of the US Open. And he played a lot of good stuff in the Premier League earlier in the year, Jeremy. We were there in Leicester. He got through to the final six, which is a real slog to get to. Yeah, and he's a guy that stays very aggressive, and they talk about straight shooters. And I'll tell you, I always thought he's one of the straightest shooters out there. Got a little bit of a loose cue ball at times, but... Doesn't really affect him or slow him down from knocking the balls in. And when he gets going, he's a very, very tough customer. Yeah, and Yasushin is number 16 in the world. Eight places behind his teammate. Yasushin by some distance the older of the two at 29. That seems like he's been around 10, 12 years as well. Been a very good player from a young age. It's one of the younger veterans of the Polish contingent. And I think their pace around the table really match up with each other. Two players that kind of identify things quickly and really get on with it. And this is going to be the first break and run for either side in this first round match. And so Poland, Poland go two clear at 3-1. Starting to take control. Not long now till we're back in Fulda. Had a great time there last summer on our first visit. We'll be back there for the European Open. Alban Ocean defending the title. And it was really well received there in Torsten Homan's hometown. He was so proud to bring the tournament there and the crowds just grew and grew and it was basically full by the time we got to the last day. So that will be the next event on the matchroom calendar. And that of course will be the week when the first automatic spot on both the European and US Moscone Cup teams will be filled. Thank you, Eddie. Fifth rack. It's in Poland to break. Leading by three wrecks to one. Now the cue ball and the two ball coming up near together, up table. I'm not sure it's really that playable, but we'll see. Very good break off getting what seemed like two balls down. The one in the pink four. Looks like a pretty easy safety chipping off the right side of the blue two. And look where he's coming now to look. Just catching the long rail right, you know, a little bit before the three and in, in between the three and the side pocket, just dropping on the end rail. Yeah, and this is a, another good thing that between these two, I see like right there, Victor was telling him, I don't kind of like it. You can't be afraid to tell your opponent, I'm not so comfortable with, or your partner, I'm not so comfortable with that play. A lot of times when you talk about position and 
the running the table, a player will say, well, I like this. And, you know, player at the table will just go with it. And maybe not all the time so comfortable with it. So you got to be pretty frank about things. going to leave a gap and remember on those types if you lay the cue ball down on the rail the speed for the rail that's usually the speed that agrees with the snooker really noticed over the last couple of days you can generally tell how a match is going for a team without looking at the scoreboard just look at them in their chair when they're sitting there and you see the poles now they've got a little bit of room to breathe in this match at 3-1 and uh, smiles and a bit of laughter and nodding heads. I think teams that seem like they're the least stressed, right? Even prior to the match, in the midst of a match, close one or not, those are the teams that are going to do the best. Going for the bank here. They're trying to play the safety behind the six. And that's where, you know, of course, good effort trying to get behind the six. But at times, I think teams disregard offense, especially when the safeties are very difficult. And, you know, it doesn't take much to give away a decent kick shot or a jump shot, even when you are playing safe. So I think at times, you know, you got to realize you got to go for some shots as well. A lot of people think pool's very cut and dry. Oh, this situation comes up, you always play safe. Or this situation comes up, you always shoot. And that's just not really it. Just like any other sport, it's a little bit of your gut instinct, and it will change from day to day. So it's all gone a bit wrong for Serbia the last few racks. They didn't even get to the table in the previous one. A chance here to start doing something about it. Kostic has a bit of a tester here, though. Yeah, you got to like what you looked at there. Very confident swing. You know, on the testers, sometimes you can get a little steery with the stroke. and Didn't see any of that there. A little thin on the red three, so coming backwards for position on the purple five is dangerous with that middle side pocket. So it looks like he's going to play short side, so going to be a bit of a shot for his partner here in a moment. Nothing easy here. And here you just got to take what you can working the ball out towards the center of the table for the green six. You want an angle to come back for the seven anyways, so don't try to overdo it, making this a missable ball. Really good there. Both these guys played in the Spanish Open in this venue last week. Michelle got the single elimination, went out to the British veteran, Imran Majid, 10-8 in the last 64. Kostic, I think, was probably here last week more to play in the junior event, or as I say, he got to the quarterfinals. He did play in the main Spanish Open itself, but didn't win any matches, was beaten in his first and then lost again in losers round one. Yeah, very nice crisp strike of the ball, so... Very similar between these two, partnered for Serbia. Well, they needed a bit of a tonic the way the match was starting to play out. Good response then to the break and run from the poles in the previous rack. Serbia, Serbia, back to only one behind. Yeah, big miss there from Conrad on the two ball, and it wasn't difficult.
you didn't get to play in the World Cup of Pool, Jeremy. It maybe came just a few years too late. If it had started a bit earlier, you might have made the American team. I'm guessing it's something you would have loved to have tasted even once. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Phil Yates asked me yesterday if I had, who would I like to have played with? I mean, you know, if I just get to look at all these errors, I mean, Skyler would have been a fun one to play with. Of course, SVB, who couldn't deny that, playing with arguably the greatest player that ever lived. And there's so many. Johnny Archers. and Rexix. Always got so along so well with Nick Varner. I thought that would have been Rexix. a pleasure. True privilege. You've got some Irish background somewhere, haven't you? You could have declared for us. Yeah. I'm not sure. Would it have been me and you, Michael? Or? Well, why not? Uh, dry break. No, the three up in the corner. Pocket going to come clear. It doesn't appear so. You know, and even here, not saying it's the right time to do it, but... You know, if the safety's tough, right? You're facing a long rail bank, kind of right in line with it. And if you just knock it in, stop your ball, you got the two there. You're looking to steal this match. And the percentages aren't on your side playing safe, which I'm not saying he should bank this ball, but I mean, why not sometimes, right? Well, looks like he could kind of cross the one, bring it back down by the six, and just float the cue ball up towards the purple. Keep it simple. Problem is, if you don't get the snooker, you're probably going to be put behind the brown seven in the next shot while the one goes back up table. Oh, he's let this get away. This is going to bounce for an offensive shot and a bit of a mistake. The Poles both played in the Spanish Open as well, of course, and both got to single elimination stage, but eliminated in the last 32. Zelinski lost to Sanyan Pelovanovic, 10-6. Yasushin almost made the next round. Would have been into the weekend's play if he'd beaten Duong Kwok Huang, but went down 10-9. After a big miss two ball in the last rack, we'll see what Conrad can do here making up for that. Got a natural angle to come across, it looks like, to get on to the pink four. Maybe not. They're looking to lay the cue ball up, so interesting. So is this cross-side bank play? Going to play safe behind the brown, maybe? And I'll tell you, if they have to throw this bank with like some right English, this is very hard to gauge on the slick table, not like your club table that where you can really manipulate these types of banks with a little side side spin. Any question mark here? And he's gonna shoot. Watch for the double bank cross side. Ooh, banked it just short. A little fortunate it didn't open up for the corner pocket. I think the brown's in the way. Yeah. I'll tell you, if you had ball in hand, you may be able to squeeze it by the brown seven, but take that on from here, that would be asking a bit much. You have to run the cue ball maybe off the, their right side of the pink. Maybe try to come up behind the six. This is tough. They felt really good about it. They may be able to come across the left side kind of in a thick manner on the pink and kind of just casually let the cue ball come over on top of the nine. I think that's pretty tough as well. Pretty smart shot. He was trying to get the speed right to use the brown seven. I don't know how much of the pink they left. If they've left the right side of the pink, you can play a very easy safety behind the nine. I think that is available. I like that better than going up table. 
Now, normally in this situation, especially with the brown seven cutting off the, the kick shot or the most common kick shot, just one rail across the table, you would move the nine a little bit, surrender ball in hand. See the Austrians there, Alban Ocean and Mario He, Max Lechner, who isn't in the team but has stayed around to support Austria. them. Ball in hand. Yeah, I think that's the Spanish A team as well. They're yeah. in the, on the sidelines now. And I guess they're staying around to cheer on the B team later. Oh, absolutely. They play Saudi Arabia tonight. Okay, they have to move it enough, right? And that seven ball is still really a problem kicking across. We had this earlier three foul situation. Could come up again. Three consecutive fouls by any team or player. It's an automatic loss of the rack. Not sure what, I hear him chalking the cue quite a bit. So he's gonna jump, kick at this. Second Good effort. Ball. Now he's going to give up a ball in hand. What looks like a dead combination. And please start the clock. Yeah, let's see where he sets this cue ball up and how hard he's going to hit this. Doesn't want the four to come back into the cue ball. Oh, no, he's okay. Team Poland. And with that, the 4-9 combination restores the two-rack gap in favor of Poland. They lead Serbia 4-2 in this race to seven.
We've seen some memorable matches so far in the first round of this World Cup. I think it's fair to say this hasn't really been one of them. It's going the way of Poland at the moment. They lead Serbia 4-2. Viktor Zelinski to break. I'll tell you, since I last saw Zelensky break the balls, didn't get to watch him much at the Spanish Open. Try to watch all the players, but so much going on. He's really improved this break, the nine. Nine on the spot from the break box. I don't know how you didn't see much of him, because as we were discussing last week, you have the ability to watch 20 or 30 pool matches all at the same time and give a detailed account of every rack. Well, there's a lot going on, and this is a great venue, but and a few of them were up elevated, right? So it's a little easier. Okay. This is a hard one to kick and stick the cue ball, but that's what you want to do. Anytime it's further away from the rail, a little harder to judge, and you just have to kind of trust it. Now, he's going to come two rails at it. So this is okay as well. With a high ball, he could still hold the cue ball behind the 4-9. Got to put a little speed into it. But you want to anyways, making sure you get a cushion. Yeah, like that. Really nice hit. And very unlucky to get the two ball somewhere near the corner pocket. Poland have been to the final of the World Cup. It was back in 2012. Wojciech Szewczyk and Karol Skowerski. And they almost won it. They only went down 10-8 against Finland, represented then, as now, by Mika Immonen and Petri Makinen, who we saw playing earlier today. Well, that's yeah. some time ago now, and they've not it's actually been past the second round since then, which is surprising. It is surprising, but again, so many great teams and whichever country's very best are going to be coming here to try and send the other teams home and... I believe that event was in Poland. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ah, this is a big mistake if he gets snookered here. And Wow. Talk about opening the door when it looks like they should have maybe been starting to shut it. We'll see what happens after the kick shot, though. Look at this. Wow. Actually, just to correct that, that was the one in Manila. I know why we were both thinking that, because the World Masters was oh, played around the same time, and Skowerski won it, and that was in Poland. That's right. Actually, I think it was in Kielce when we yeah. were this year for the Worlds. It was two Polish players in the finals That's as right, well. That's yeah. right, yeah. Okay, got to go really thin, and I was about to say, that's an experience... The ball just spreads a bit more on the slick felt, and any time you're going into the ball in the rail quickly like that, you just kind of let it kind of creep across the table and come upward. You'll hold the line on the cue ball much better. But Fazelj had to know that he's going to have to come with some shots from being out of line, right, just because of some inexperience from his partner. Nice recovery. Get over the nine ball. Start stop short. So this is another one that you have to make a decision. You have two options with high left, kind of like an inside spin, checking the cue ball. But on this table, you want to pull the ball two rails around the black eight. Just agrees with how the table wants to play a bit more. I don't see him putting much low on this. So. Uh, got a little quick. You get a little quick, it's definitely going to deflect on you with that right English. And just a little jerky with the backswing. And what you'll see is that big pause in the back. Now, he plays with a bit of a pause anyways in the back. But when you see it very severe, that means you pulled it away a little quickly. And the pause is actually kind of trying to slow things down but can get to you. Just looking at Marcel Eckhart there, the referee, I think that's the first time I've ever looked at him, and he's almost looked a little old, but it's only by comparison to all the youth on show out there. 
I'll make sure I tell him you said that. Tell him the full thing that I said. <laughs> All right. Zelensky, who does not mind drawing his cue ball. Big stroke. Well, Serbia had the chance, and although it wasn't straightforward, it was one of those he looked at and said, if they're going to have any chance of turning this around, really got to win this rack from now. Instead of which, oh, it's another one, which has gone the way the of the polls. And now they're starting to see the winning line come into view. It's 5-2. Do you see the polls as a team who could win this? The oh, whole thing, that is. Absolutely. I mean... What we're not seeing, or what we're not recognizing at times here is the, the pressure. The pressure of the first round in this race is seven. Yeah, plenty of time to improve, so long as you get through, and this is what it all leads to. Of course, the main thing is you want to win the World Cup and have one of the biggest moments of your career. But it's well worth doing from a financial perspective as well, because the winners get $60,000 to share between them. You can see how quickly the money goes up as you move through the rounds, particularly towards the end quarter of a million dollars total prize fund. The great thing is, having money like that on offer is becoming more and more commonplace in nine ball pool, so loads of opportunities for these guys to pile up the dollars. 5-2. Yeah, and you got to believe it's going to continue to grow just because the partici participation participation, excuse me, of this sport worldwide. And there's, you know, it's just like anything else. There's only so many weeks in the calendar, right? So you're going to have a lot of locations wanting to be a part of this World Nine Ball Tour. And we're seeing that more and more every every month, every day, it seems like. I'm not sure Matchroom would agree. I think they're appealing to someone for an extra 10 weeks or so to be added to the year just so they can put on more tournaments on a 62-week calendar. Yeah. Okay, big shot again, especially, you know, kind of starting to move forward now. You know, this team's in a great position to win. You know, with opportunity, they're supposed to put together very clean racks. And this is the feeling they want to end this match with. Yeah, and when you see the errors Serbia are making and the balls they're missing, and you've got a good lead, and you add all those things up, it takes a lot of pressure off. And I tell you, that was a bit out of control stroke there. Even if he didn't catch the point, I understand he was trying to maybe open the 4-8, but that ball had a ton of speed. And just not a real common way for the top players to move the cue ball, even if they're trying to, you know, open some balls up or do something a little special. It's like he can come off the right side of the pink and go behind the 8 if he wants, just mildly. Can move the cue ball around behind the six. Doesn't want to fluke the eight. That's really good. You notice that rail speed, Michael. That's the one you always want to feel. All right, I like the right side rail here. If you kick to the left, yeah, this is the one I like, the right side rail. This doesn't really offer much of a scratch if you come behind it. You go to the left side rail, you come behind this ball. Extension, Extension please. Scratch is on for sure. Now a little harder to judge maybe the right side rail, but now he's going to go the short cue. So should attack on a long rail bank if you're going to go the jump cue, I believe, anyways. Good contact, looking for a little, little fortune. Can't say it's all bad. Should just be something simple, nipping off the left edge, their left edge of the pink, bringing the cue ball back behind the nine. He's going to double bank this away, it looks like. Send the cue ball. 
And again, playing all those shots, you want to feel a lot more control is what I like uh, in those situations. This exchange here, so important now, particularly for the Serbs. Yeah, should put the cue ball behind the brown seven here. Just land the pink on the left side rail. I caught a little thin, so that's going to run a bit. I don't think you'll see Zelensky mess around here. I think he's going to play safe. Just come one rail, just kind of come off the natural angle, come between the eight and the six and lay the cue ball down on the bottom rail. Could come two rails behind it. A lot of the players like this angle. Sometimes the speed's harder to judge there. Now a friendly little kiss off the six. good was that to, for only the four to hit the point. Laid the cue ball down behind the brown just really perfectly. Called even more than perfect with the jump cue. Really amazing, actually. I guess he's not coming too near the side here with the cue ball. So the exchange on the four ball has gone the way of the poles. Really from here they'll expect to get to the hill. If it goes 6-2, that's the sort of scoreline you look at and you think, well, it looks as though they've been dominant and in control against their less experienced opponents. But it's not really been like that. Poland haven't exactly blown them away. Now two of the five games... They have on their side those late misses in the rack by Serbia on two seven balls early in the match that could have really applied more heat than this opening round does along with these races to seven. And when you're what is considered a pretty good favorite here, that can add pressure also. Victor Zelensky then strokes in the nine ball. And in a moment, he'll be breaking on the hill. 6-2 to Poland in this first round match against Serbia. As I said, Poland have played in all 15 World Cups. Prior to this, in only four of those, they've gone out in the first round. But round two has been a frequent place for them to fall. Made it to the quarterfinals just four times. And only once have they gone any further than the last eight, that time in 2012, when they got to the final. Beat Hong the Kong Manfrey. in this round last year when it was Wojciech Szewczyk and Mieszko Fortunski, and then lost to the Americans in round two. So one more rack is all Poland need to set up a second round match against Albania. Break we've seen from Zelensky so far in this match. A little thin on the one, maybe. Well, it's 6-2 down in the first round of the World Cup, race to seven. That was a decent shot there. I'll tell you, I mean, you can't count them out totally, and a few reasons why. Of course, they're very capable, but from what I've seen so far, they break the balls really well, so they can get these 
these down. It starts with this blue two right here. Not an easy out, but they do have a chance. Yeah, and it's a chance that extension, please. would have been left to the poles to finish off the match had he missed that one. So handled the pressure well there. Well, I don't think they were trying to set up for an early win, but maybe got a little more out of the cue ball than desired or anticipated. It's going to take on a tough combination, cutting it backwards. A little bit of a blind pocket into the nine. And we'll see both these players. Of course, it's going to be Conrad with the big draw stroke here off the nine. Should be able to get back, though. Maybe not perfectly on the pink, but don't think the nine is, like, guarding to where it's going to just stop the cue ball there. I thought a draw stroke, he could certainly come backwards, maybe in between the 5-8. I uh, got a little quick. But even off the back of that, Serbia can't catch a break. And I'll tell you another thing that's probably promoting a few of our mistakes that we don't expect. It's just, you know, these players with a seven, eight, nine days of tuning in to a little bit different equipment with the Spanish Open. Of course, the weather was a little different as well, a little more humid, a little more heated. So that's the thing about pool. You have to be able to change, whether it be equipment or the weather itself or a number of different conditions. Yeah, I didn't get what we'd usually see from Victor there. The seven coming to Serbia's aid. Well, that bridging over that would have had much more chance of getting on the four. jump shot. It's like Pizel's just taking it on and he's had that short cue in his hand quite a bit in this short race to seven. I like his chances here. Watch out for the scratch or maybe a little action at the nine. Get it sweet. Caught a little thick to the pocket but that's going to be just fine. This ball's come down and landed absolutely straight. Don't know how much he can really cheat the pocket to get out a little bit. And just kind of pinch it out as much as you can comfortably. Could that, from Serbia's point of view, be that? Yeah, well, it certainly should. And got to believe Victor's so solid, he'll knock this little six ball in. And Conrad, a little flat here on the seven, so he's got to put a little speed into this going forward or backwards. Zelensky not, probably not too happy where he left his partner. And like I said before, these guys should really have been looking to end this match with... A little more tidy with the, the cue ball, in my opinion. You know, 
really picking apart the rack a bit more. That's what it's going to take. These two players can really get flowing around the table. And that's great that they complement each other, but it's rare that that's going to be able to happen very often in these types of races. I mean, you don't want to play slow or anything like that. I'm just talking about you want to hit your marks. That's the main thing for these top players. Now here, does he get involved with the cue ball, or does he just play it naturally and go into the nine? That's the comfortable way to make the eight. And it's not a bad play either. He's going to pull on the cue ball, it looks like. Yeah. Now, Zelensky, he gets down with the cue moving. That's just kind of how his style is, but he kind of settles the feet. Looked like he didn't get quite as settled as we're used to. He's going to have a stretch here. And the youngster, you know, both youngsters actually, but Lazar being only 17, wants to win. But should take this as a great experience and a really nice bank there from Conrad. Yeah, it's an experience which is over. The final score won't reflect how much of a part Serbia played in this match and the chances they've had, but their record continues the after four World Cup appearances now. They've still never won a match in the tournament. Poland know they'll have to play an awful lot better than that if they are to win the World Cup for the first time, but they are through to the second round to play Albania. They've beaten Serbia by seven racks to two. A victory for Poland despite perhaps a little bit of a hairy moment towards the end of that final rack but 7-2 eventually the victory for them as they progress to round two of the World Cup of full car boys is alongside me. Carl, it was a strong start from Serbia wasn't it? Yeah obviously just a few missed balls early on and we've seen this this is what happens at the World Cup of pool Poland delighted to get through tricky match obviously race to seven you just want to get the win and advance. You can see there, six missed balls. I know we always look at that stat, but obviously playing nine ball when there's not many balls on the table, it always seems to come down to that stat there. Yeah, I mean, there's not much room for, for error at all when it is just a race to seven as it is due the, through the first couple of rounds of the World Cup of Paul. But it is victory for Poland, who have got a strong record in this competition, haven't they? Yeah, and we talk about them a lot, you know, they've got a lot of players from Poland. I remember going there about 10 years ago, they had two or three good players, now there's probably 10 or 12. You know, they could probably field five teams uh, in the World Cup. They're going to look for a good run here because they're two quality players. In terms of that Serbian performance, though, some, some positive signs for, for a country that's really growing in nine ball. Yeah, obviously the World Nine Ball Tour is growing. You know, these two boys play on the, on the circuit, you know, at the end of the day, they're very young, so they've got plenty of time, you know, as the sport of nine ball grows, they'll grow into it, so they'll be back. OK, well, we will hear from uh, the Polish team in just a moment. In fact, we can head over there now because uh, they're speaking to Jeremy. Well, a short race to seven and playing as a favorite, maybe a little nerves out there in round one? Yeah, you know, first round is never easy. Uh, you have to settle down as quick as possible and try to be play your best game. Also not easy to you know, always the arena table is a little bit different. So first racks, you always need to fill the table and to adjust to the uh, equipment. As <laughs> well, the Polish contingents are always great. Uh, another great team from Poland, a couple of days off. Now, what are you going to do? Yeah, we, a, few, a few years can't uh, qualify to uh, quarterfinals. So for us, it's a very important match now. Uh, we're gonna try our do our the best. Well, I figure you two to improve and good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let's confirm this afternoon's results then as round one of the World Cup of Pool has continued. The Netherlands 
picked up a 7-4 victory over Hong Kong, China. Chinese Taipei, 7-1, the margin of victory for them over Finland. And in fact, Chinese Taipei and the Netherlands will meet in round two later on this week. And then finally, as we've just heard, Poland, 7-2 victory over Serbia. Carl, there's been a couple of interesting, well, three really interesting matches this afternoon. What stood out for you? And I know you were backing Chinese Taipei as potential winner of this World Cup, of Paul. So you must be feeling pretty happy about that pick with the way they played. Yeah, I think obviously it's been a good day for the seeds. I thought one of the seeded teams may struggle. I'm not saying lose, but I thought it'd be a lot closer. I thought Finland would have put up a better performance, but in the end, that was very poor. In the end, obviously, in the afternoon session, seeded teams, no real problems. Yeah, which is the opposite of what we had earlier on, or in fact yesterday, in the, the opening matches of this World Cup. Because like we've said so much, this, this race to seven format, this winner breaks format, it can mean that these matches can get away from you really quickly if you let them. Yeah, I think in the olden days that was definitely the case, but obviously now the breaks are a lot tougher, the pockets are smaller, and as we've seen in the opening couple of days, balls are being missed. OK, well, we've got plenty more to come uh, in round one this evening when we return from here in Lugo. Germany get their campaign underway first up on the table against New Zealand. Germany, the number three seed, so relatively high expectations uh, given how some of these early matches have unfolded. Hungary are up against Bosnia and Herzegovina in our second match. And then the Spain A team have already exited the competition, but there is still some Spanish hope left because Spain B, the 16th seeded team, will open up their account against Saudi Arabia. So plenty to look forward to this evening, Carl. I mean, how much pressure is on that Spain B team now that in terms of Spanish interest, and this is being hosted in Spain, that all the hopes now rest with them? Yeah, I think it's actually probably gone the other way because there was a chance they could have played David and Fran in the second round. And I think when I played in England and we had two teams, when the other team got beat, it kind of relaxed us because all the focus is on you. So I think Spain beat, it's actually better for them. And in terms of Germany, the number three seed, Joshua Filler, Moritz Newhausen as well. I mean, Joshua Filler, we know, is a fantastic pool player. Maybe not done as well as he'd perhaps like in some of the recent uh, World Nine Ball Tour events. Yeah, I mean, his partner, Moritz Neuhausen, very young German. They practice together, same academy. Filler, for me, the most talented player I've ever seen on the pool table. They're a very dangerous team this year. They're going to want a good run, but New Zealand, tricky, tricky opponents. Yeah, New Zealand will be looking to cause perhaps a bit of an upset later on this evening. Do make sure you join us when we return for the evening session of day two of the World Cup of Pool. Round one continues. We're back with you from 6 p.m. UK time on Sky Sports Action. So another brilliant afternoon of pool in the World Cup. Huge congratulations to Poland, Chinese Taipei and the Netherlands who all go through to round two. The big question is, who will be joining them? We'll find out a little bit later on. Goodbye.